Wan. We're here with Caroline King from the Red Cross of Northern and Eastern Maine. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. We're making a habit of this. We are. Well, because there's always something to talk about. You know, we've been talking about the critical need for blood donations. That hasn't changed in the last week, I assume. It has not. Yeah. Please make an appointment. Yes, indeed. But also there is a need for volunteers, and volunteers serve so many different purposes in your organization. So tell us a little bit about kind of what you're looking for. Sure. Yeah. Right now in Penobscot County, we have an emergent need for volunteers to respond to disasters. That could be a house fire, it could be a flood, um, or it could be a large-scale national disaster. We've watched the, the hurricanes that are coming into the southeast. We're looking for volunteers to respond to all of those things. We're looking for a volunteer who can spend an hour or 40 uh, in a week. Uh, so really, whatever your schedule is, we have a volunteer place for you. Okay. And what are some of the different ways that folks can support the work of the Red Cross? You can volunteer, that's giving of your time. What are some of the other methods that folks can, you know, sort of lend a hand? Sure. Yeah. You can uh, volunteer, as you've mentioned. You can give blood, make an appointment to make a blood donation. We're waiting for you, ma'am. <laughs> um, and you can also, if you neither of those work for you, you can make a financial gift. Okay. Um, how do folks, what's the best way for folks to go about doing any of those things? Sure. Yeah. You can go to our website, easy peasy, uh, redcross.org, and mm -hmm. uh, sign up to volunteer. You can make an appointment to give blood, or you can make a financial gift. You know, I'm sure you, you spend a lot of time talking to your volunteers. What's, what's some of the feedback you get about, you know, sort of their emotional reaction or just, you know, what they get out of volunteering? They get so much out of it. Yeah. They love it. Our volunteers really have created a community amongst themselves, mm -hmm. um, but our community needs to grow. So yeah. we're looking for new folks to join our team. And, you know, I think a lot of people, we hear all the time when we report on house fires as terrible as they are, and we hear, oh, the Red Cross is responding and pitching in to help. You know, talk a little about what that's like to walk onto the scene of a house fire where folks have been devastated, they've lost their belongings. That's got to be a pretty delicate situation. So, so how do you engage with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Our volunteers wake up in the middle of the night and drive to the scene where fo folks are watching, literally watching their home burn to the ground. Yeah. Um, it takes compassion, it takes empathy. Um, we train our volunteers so they have all the resources and information that they need to mm -hmm. help that family in that moment. Um, if that's not quite the right fit for you, we have volunteers who make all of that work possible um, behind the scenes, in mm -hmm. front of the scenes. Um, there's really a spot for everyone. Yeah. So folks who are intimidated by maybe the situations that you're talking about, going to a disaster scene, going to a house fire, if you don't feel like you're up for that, there's still plenty of things for you to do. Absolutely. You yeah. want to make sure your neighbors are safe. We can. You can learn how to put in smoke alarms in someone's house. Another great volunteer activity. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of things for folks to do, and I hope that there are people who are going to be lining up to do it. Excellent. We need everybody. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us once again. Folks, stay with us. Your extended forecast is coming up.